Bogotov. Good morning, everyone. By the way, that's about all my Hebrew. And I'm really happy to be here in Israel, really in support of the many Motorolans in Israel. We've been here for 40 years. We're very happy that we're here. We try to harness and use some of the qualities that Dr. Uh, that the previous speaker uh, has mentioned here. And I can tell you for sure that uh, teamwork and a disrespect for management are true qualities of the Israeli team. <laughs> you know, someone mentioned Dr. Duran just recently, and I'm fortunate enough to sit on the advisory board of the Duran Center for Quality. He just passed away at 101. Dr. Deming passed away at 94. So I think one of the dimensions of quality we talk about is quality of life. That's what we all in the quality profession have to look forward to if we play it right. My comments today are gonna to kind of center on three things. And I wanna talk about first, some comments about the evolution of quality over time and how we look at it, how it has progressed and how it has changed. The conference's theme is emerging dimensions of quality and I'm gonna try and articulate some of those as we see them. And then lastly, what is our role as leaders of quality within our organization? So, quality started back in the earliest times with the detection and inspection for defects at the output. Okay, we focused on reactive measures. We focused on items that had to do primarily with the factory, primarily with the production of, of equipment. We then realized that the process by which things were made was more effectively managed than the actual outcomes. And so we went into an era where total quality management, things like quality function deployment were articulated. And this is where initially zero defect concepts and, and uh, items like this started. I think the, the following era was what I would call crystallization of methodologies. We looked at things like Six Sigma, we looked at the ISO 9000 and other quality management systems and actually integrated a lot of management concepts using quality techniques. Where I think we are now is looking at quality beyond the outcome and looking at it as the management of business process excellence. Focusing more on things like voice of the customer, focusing more on the role of leadership in driving quality rather than the function, and also the move into non-traditional processes. I think uh, we're gonna have a seminar uh, later, later this week about uh, quality and Six Sigma in the financial industry. I think this is an example of some areas that are now getting the quality religion that aren't the traditional manufacturing and scientific areas. While mentioning Six Sigma, we at Motorola are very proud that uh, you know, we have just had recently in 2006 the 20th birthday of Six Sigma. And I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about the evolution of Six Sigma over the years. When we started, Six Sigma was about the defect in the factory. And the singular insight that was brought in by the originators of Six Sigma was not the calculation of standard deviations or anything like that. It was the concept of mean shifting and process capability to lead to virtual perfection in design. That innovation profoundly changed the way we and later the industry looked at quality in the manufacturing space. In 1995, a great company, GE, took those concepts and applied them to the dollar. Okay, whereas we looked at the defect and its reduction, GE took the view that the methodology would allow you to, in a systemic way, improve the performance of a business. And they came up with the principle that if you had a black belt, you could expect a million dollars plus per year of business improvement. So if you needed a program that had $500 million of process improvement, you hired 500 black belts and put them to work and lo, it would happen. 
Okay, this was a profound change in the nature of Six Sigma. I think as, as you then see, financial services adopted Six Sigma, Motorola then pasted in the GE and Abbott and other approaches of business improvement, leading to our, our most recent institutionalization of it called Digital Six Sigma. Okay, and now in the most recent time, the concepts of lean, which in the largest sense could be viewed as a methodology for the implementation phase of DMAIC, have gained a lot of traction and most notably in the healthcare industry recently. To talk more philosophically about this, Six Sigma has gone from a very literal definition of a metric, evolved into a methodology, and thus increased its business impact. And now, what we feel, and what a lot of industry feels, it is a catalyst to drive change within an organization. And the people that are practitioners of Six Sigma are change agents that have expertise in getting results in a very efficient way. And this evolution has increased the impact of Six Sigma to the organization. When I took on the role of Chief Quality Officer of Motorola, it was interesting. My background is I've managed large engineering organizations worldwide in scope, large businesses. I was asked, um, we need you to drive quality at Motorola. And I thought about it and I said, one of the key things in terms of attempting to drive quality, which quality really equals culture in an organization, is you first have to define it, okay? And you have to define it in a way that is relevant both at the highest organizational level and down to the very individual. And after thinking about it quite a bit, I chose and we discussed, and we ended up with a very simple definition that I think is very applicable, I'd like to share with you. Basically, quality is two things. Quality is being the preferred supplier to your customers, finding out what their needs are and meeting them in such a unique way that they give you preferential treatment as their vendor. They include you in their strategy, they drive you, to it, the first in line as people they want to do business with. That's a key aspect. I hope that's a Motorola cell phone. <laughs> what we usually say at the beginning of our Motorola conferences is, all of you with Motorola cell phones, please turn them off. All of you with Nokia cell phones, please throw them away and buy a Motorola one. But anyway, being number one with your customers is one key aspect. That's what drives the top line of the industry. The second one is having a leadership cost structure. And let me, let me articulate that a little bit. What that means is spending less on waste than your competitor, okay? Let me talk about that a little bit because I think that bears, some, that bears a little bit of discussion. Let's say we are in a product development organization. Okay, and you are perfect. You are 10 sigma. You are SEI level nine. You are perfect. You do everything exactly correctly. So what do you do? You capture requirements for the product perfectly. You reduce them to a design flawlessly. You then execute that design in hardware, software, mechanics, in a flawless